Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on reclaiming and rejuvenating old encaustic works. In the first video, which I will link to the end of this so you can get a taste of what went on there, we created this surface, these two surfaces. I went on after the live was over to create a few more and finish them with the tar, which I'm going to show you now. But I put it all out here so you can see the mess <laughs> and the material that is put to use. Now I have this information in many other places, so I won't do an in-depth repeat here, but I am using latexite trowel patch, shallow asphalt patch for this process. I have seen it on Amazon. I get it at Home Depot in the US and it for me has proven to be the best material to use. It is a non-carcinogenic. A lot of the tar materials that are made for roofing patch have a really caustic, nasty smell to them and um, can cause health issues. So just, you know, inhaling that smell for too long. I really enjoy this product. It's got a slight graininess to it, which is beautiful as well. That's why I go with the shallow. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna get going. So on these two pieces in the previous live video that is uploaded now to YouTube, we did the paint. And then I did some incising. I referred to natural as well as human created incising. Now I'm gonna work into those incisings with this tar. Now this is the very same process that is done with oil paint in filling incised lines and marks. So if you're familiar with that, this will not be a mystery to you. But I share all the same. My favorite concoction, if you will, of this trowel patch of the tar is to take a portion of the tar and put it into a container and let it dry out a bit. So here's a really big piece of dried outness. <laughs> What's happening in that process of drying out, as I'm calling it, is the water content, this is a water-based material, the water content evaporates and it leaves just the material that is that asphalt patch behind. And then I go in with simply vegetable oil. You can use whatever oil you like to use in your studio. Linseed oil, of course, would work great. I use vegetable oil, pour a little bit over the surface of that dried out tar, and then move my way into it. Sometimes I will use it straight from the bucket. So here's some just added tar and it's really mushy and gushy. Um, that's not my preferred way to use it. It just gives a different color, a different application process. I like to use this really dried up stuff. Rub that oil into that dried up tarness. And what is happening is it's reconstituting is the best word I can come up with it. As long as we're rejuvenating and reclaiming, why not reconstitute? <laughs> so it's reconstituting that tar that has had the moisture content evaporated out of it. The oil is picking up that tarness. And then I rub it into the surface of my painting. You can be very precise and just put it in the certain lines if you choose. But I tend to use it as a toning paint process <laughs> over my entire surface. Now my applicator is a very inexpensive chipwood brush that I have cut down. I like it stiffer, so I cut off half the length of those bristles, and it just gives me a good hand to really rub that material into the surface. Now you can see they look just a mess right now, not very inspiring, but the final step, of course, is to wipe that excess away. And you can choose for yourself. This is your creative discovery option to remove every little last bit and just keep that material in the grooves and crevices and lines, all those incisings. Or you can leave a little bit of the blush behind and have it be tar tinted as well as the lines and incisings filled in. You can see how it, it really pops. It takes the composition to a new level, adding that fill of the incised lines in this case with the tar. Now on these three I did off camera, I was using the palette paint, the spilled bits that go all over the palette and 
have a lovely, of course, grayish tone to them. <laughs> you can see the sizing really filled nicely. I may come into these and do a little more work, thinking maybe small bits of color, other complementary color somewhere might be nice. But for now, I'm going to sit with these. I'm going to admire their sweet little four by four inch nuance. <laughs> I'm going to try to straighten them on the camera as I'm looking at the camera. All right. That's it. It's beautiful. Time spent in pure encaustic, working with new materials, new experimentation, play, and intrigue to rejuvenate and reclaim works that have gone fallow, boring. All right. Thanks for coming along. Everybody have a great time. Join me at pbsartist.com if you'd like more of these. There's a membership or subscription program there for pure encaustic pure obstruction, as well as creative meditations. See you again soon.